I call this meeting of the Williamsburg James City County School Board to order. Ms. Serza, can you take the roll? Dr. Beers. Here. Ms. Cook. Here. Mr. Fuentes. Here. Ms. Hummel. Here. Mrs. Taylor. Here. Mrs. Young. Here. Mr. Kelly. Here. Thank you. Can I get uh, a motion for certification of closed session? Mr. Chair, I certify to the best of each member's knowledge the Williamsburg James City County School Board while in closed session discussed only public business matters lawfully exempted from the open meeting requirements as stated in, the, in Virginia law and that only such public matters as were identified in the motion convening the closed meeting were heard, discussed, or considered. Is there a second? Second. So any discussion? Ms. Serza? Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. Uh, now is appoint, appointment, organization of the board, appointment of the chair. Turn the gavel over to Dr. Constantino. Thank you. Um, I need a motion from the board to open the floor for nominations for chair of the school board to serve for the calendar year 2016. So moved. I now ask the board for nominations for chair of the school board. Dr. Constantino, I nominate Jim Kelly to serve as chair. Thank you. Nominations. Can I have a motion to close the nominations? So moved. Uh, Mrs. Serza, please uh, call the roll that uh, Mr. Kelly will be chair of the Williamsburg James City County School Board for the 2016 calendar year. You're actually calling a vote for closing of the nominations. That's right. That. <laughs> Mr. Fuentes. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Ms. Cook. Aye. Now I will ask Ms. Serza to call the roll on the motion that Mr. Kelly be chair of the Williamsburg James City County School Board for the 2016 calendar year. Ms. Serza. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Mr. Fuentes. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Uh, I'd like to just uh, thank my board member, fellow board members for uh, electing me to, to serve as chair for the 2016 calendar year. Uh, it's my distinct honor to serve on this board, and um, it's my privilege to, uh, to serve as chair. But we are privileged to serve a school system as accomplished as WJCC. WJCC is, only, is one of only 22 school systems across the Commonwealth where every school is accredited. The academic record of our students is above Commonwealth and national average in just about every category that's measured. We are a destination school system. With, with families choosing to live and shop and pay taxes in the city of Williamsburg and in James City County because of our schools. We have our students, teachers, administrators to thank for the quality of our schools and the tremendous amount of hard work each of them do. It is inappropriate, in my opinion, to look at dollars spent in our school system as sunk costs. This money should be looked at as an investment, an investment in our present, as an attraction for families to live here, work here, and shop here, and as investments in our future so that James City County and the city of Williamsburg remain as attractive destinations for families and businesses. By no means does that mean we should not be utilizing our funding efficiently and with appropriate fiduciary responsibility. But the return on our investment in our schools should not be denied. There is much right in our schools and much needs to remain the same. But there is a lot that we have to work on. We have to plan for the growth which is going which is happening in our community today and which will continue to take place and ensure that we have the facilities necessary to provide for our community and the middle school students and the elementary school students who will be here. We need, we need to begin the process of renewing our strategic plan for the next five years. Our existing plan continues to serve us well, but we need to take a fresh look at it and set the direction for the future. We need to continue and expand the tools required to deliver an education useful for 21st century learners 
ensure we provide the technology and opportunities to make this happen. We need to develop a budget which meets the needs of our school system and is in line with our strategic plan. We need to ensure our, we efficiently utilize every dollar of taxpayer money and work to provide the resources necessary for our students to receive a first class education. But we also need to not forget our teachers, support staff, administrators, operations personnel, and all of our employees who work to meet the needs of our students and deliver the quality education our community expects. Our employees are valued and should be treated with respect. They are not simply a cost center where savings should be harvested by passing health care costs along to the employees and reducing benefits. We are in a people business. Our products and the resources used to deliver those products are people. We should not forget that. So thank you again for entrusting me as uh, the chair. I will do my best. I will make mistakes, but I will try not to repeat them. So uh, we have lots of work to do, so we might as well get started. Um, can I have nominations for vice chair of the school board to serve for the calendar 2016 year? Chair, I would like to nominate Kara Cook for vice, cha vice chair. Thank you, Dr. Beers. Are there any other nominations? Can I get a motion to close the nominations for vice chair? I move that we close the nominations. Ms. Urza, can you take the vote, please, for closing nominations? Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Mr. Fuentes. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Thank you, Mrs. Cook. I look uh, actually, let me go, I'm one step ahead, all right? Uh, I would add all those in favor of Mrs. Kira Cook being vice chair of the Williamsburg James City County School Board for the 2016 calendar year to signify by saying aye, Ms. Serza. Mr. Fuentes. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Thank you, thank you, Mrs. Cook, for stepping up to as vice chair. I look forward to working with you in the coming year. Uh, ask for nominations for parliamentarian of the school board to serve for the calendar year 2016. Mr. Chair, I would like to nominate Dr. Jam James Beers to serve as parliamentary for the school board uh, in the calendar year 2016. Thank you, Mrs. Cook. Are there any other nominations for parliamentarian? Can I have a motion to close nominations? Mr. Chair, I move that we close. I assume I don't need a second on that. Mrs. Herzog can take a vote for closing nominations. Mrs. Taylor. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Mr. Fuentes. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Uh, can I have, I mean, I'm going to one step ahead of myself. All those in favor of Dr. Pierce being parliamentarian for the Williamsburg James City County School Board for the 2016 calendar year? Ms. Serza? Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Mr. Fuentes. Aye. Ms. Hummel. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Thank you, Dr. Beers. I appreciate you stepping up. I'm looking forward to working with you as well. Sweet. Um, <coughs> appointment of clerk, deputy clerk, and superintendent's designee. Dr. Constantino? Yes, Mr. Chair, members of the board, each year uh, the school board uh, needs to appoint its clerk, its deputy clerk, and um, a designee for the superintendent should the superintendent be absent or unable to attend the meeting. Uh, we are, are recommending that uh, Mrs. Serza and Mrs. Hayworth be uh, reappointed to uh, clerk and deputy clerk uh, and that Dr. Heron, deputy superintendent, be designated to attend meetings of the school board in the absence or the inability of the superintendent to attend. Thank you. Can I get a motion to recommend the rec motion that Mrs. Serza be appointed clerk, Mrs. Hayworth be appointed deputy clerk, and that Dr. Heron, deputy superintendent, be designated to attend meetings of the school board? Mr. Chair, I um, move that we accept the uh, superintendent's recommendation for appointment, uh, appointment of clerk, deputy clerk, and superintendent's designee. Is there a second? Is there any discussion? 
been moved and seconded to to approve the recommendation of the superintendent for the clerk, deputy clerk, and the superintendent's designee. Ms. Serza? Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. 5.03, approval of schedule of school board meetings. Uh, is there a motion for approval of the school board meeting <coughs> dates uh, as presented tonight? Mr. Chair, I move approval of the schedule of school board meetings for 2016 as presented. Is there a second? Um, I would like to uh, propose a modification, if I could, to the February 2nd meeting that that move from room 400 to um, here in County F, because we are likely to have a public forum that day for the uh, Powhatan district seat. Is that okay? Yeah, I approve that amendment. I agree with that amendment. Is that okay? Second, is that okay? Second. Is there any other discussion about the meeting dates? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Chair, I'd just like to seek clarification that about the meetings in February that they are as listed in this document. Yes, they are the they will be approved as February 2nd and February 16th. We had previously previously had February 9th, but uh, the conflict which was which we thought was there for February 2nd was not there. So we're going to maintain our regular and routine meeting schedule. Um, I'd, I'd also like to note that should uh, we find ourselves needing more meetings. Um, uh, in, in the months where we have, we meet only once that we can make that adjustment at that time. Any other discussion? I'd like to, uh, is there a reason that we can't meet in building F? I'd like to move that we do meet in building F for all of our meetings. The, um, uh, we've traditionally had our work sessions, work sessions at the, the school board meeting because it's a better area for us for to communicate and isn't there a cost for us to have building F do you know how much that is cost but I don't know um, I would just as a point of history that's that's not last year the reason we were meeting building in James Blair was because that was the year we were supposed to meet in the city the agreement years ago was that we would alternate between the city and the county, but the city building was gone, so we decided to have work sessions there and meet here. Uh, this coming year, this year, 2016, it's this building's turn. Yeah, I, I thought we would traditionally always meet in the city, and then we would always meet in the county. Right, but last year the city was not available. The building was, the, the striker wasn't available. So um, the work session, that's why we did, the, that was my understanding was why we did the work sessions and the building up, that was the only year we've done that. But, um, yeah, I thought we've done that for the last couple of years, met in the, met in the, in the, in Blair for, for our work sessions. Started meeting in central office when we moved there because of the cost of the meetings is portion of it. Longer than just the, the past year, I think. I remember back then it was because of conflict. When there was a conflict, we did it, but that's fine. Yes, um, that's if everyone's happy. Yes, I, I personally like the idea of having work sessions in central office because it's uh, ours. Um, and, and then I, I think Mrs. Young uh, brought up a good point in conversation a couple weeks ago about just as perhaps um, if we do meet in, Gla in Blair, um, reconfiguring the space so that backs aren't towards people. And I'm not sure if the technology allows that, but perhaps that's also an adjustment that could be um, made. Um, and then also I think broadcasting live is probably a pretty important thing. And I don't know where, if that's technologically possible either. Where we currently are at Blair, I'm not sure. And, and we're, we're not going to make many investments there because we're coming out of there in June. So um, as far as being able to configure that as to a, into an office space or into a broadcast space. So, um, the reason I am opposed to meeting at uh, James Blair is because of the configuration of the room. 
people that are sitting behind us cannot cannot hear us. And I think uh, uh, Ms. Cordasco continually pointed out that we needed to talk louder. Whereas if we were facing the audience or facing the, the people that were here, then they could hear us. And that concerns me that they are un unable to hear us. The room was reconfigured. I would reconsider that motion. Um, so are you making a motion to amend the, amend the? I'm making a, a motion that that be investigated before a decision is made. Um, it's a motion on the table for approval of these. So you're, you're making, what, what's your motion again? I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying uh -huh. to understand because right now I have a motion on the, on the motion that's been approved and seconded for the approval of the, of the calendar. Right. So are you modifying the motion? Making a, a, a motion to modify the motion? Yeah, I believe we we have to deal with the modification before right. we go to the actual. Let's make sure a modification of the as a modification of the motion. So it's been it's been um, moved to to have all of our our board board meetings in building F for the calendar 2016 year. Is there a second to that motion? Second. Second. Uh, Order. I'm trying to make sure that we're, I know what we're voting on here because. Well, right now there's a we have a motion on the table for the calendar. Right. It's been amended. A motion has been made to amend it, to amend the, to amend that a, a motion to amend the original motion, to meet a county F. So you have seconded that. And that it was a modification in lieu of that. That's what I'm saying. That that was what you seconded, right? No. Well, I'm, I yes, I seconded that. But I'm but we're, before we vote, I want to make sure we're voting on the right thing and following the, since we're the discussion of Robert's rules here, um, th you did an amendment prior to that. Right, with the, with which the was right accepted by the mover and the second. So that is now part of the original motion. Okay. So, okay. so this motion is to, is would, when we vote on this motion, it would be to vote on whether we have all of our built room, our meetings in County F. So whether we amend the motion. Oh, okay. Right? So we're going to vote on whether F all the way down. Correct. Okay. Ms. Cook. Um, before I um, weigh in on that, can can staff give us a sense of when that space will no longer be available in Belair? May, I think, is when we start to begin the transfer. Yeah, that's why we have May as our last last meeting. And, and do we know when strike? I do not. Which are you speaking with? I, Mr. Chair, I support Mrs. Young's um, amendment. Okay. Um, okay. Any other any other discussion about the amendment to move all of the all of the meetings to County F? I just can I yes, speak? Okay. Home. I um, I'm wondering about keeping the option open for when Stryker is available that we can meet a, at Stryker um, since that historically has been an option for us to go back and forth. I know it, we kind of have to balance what is a kind of convenient, it's always in the same place versus uh, having different locations that are more accessible to people? Um, what, we, what we would, what I would propose that we would do is when Stryker becomes more solid as far as when that date would be, that we would revisit our calendar and maybe our locations and maybe move them all to Stryker or, or okay. somewhere back and forth, right. So just to clarify earlier though, that it was, the, it was always, uh, th this year would be building F, and then next year would be striker would be the normal rotation for the whole year. Oh, for okay, and that makes sense because the, I mean you do have this sense of making it easy for citizens to know Unlocation. where you're meeting every week. Right, that was the mm -hmm. right. That was what I was saying in the past. That was an issue, but that was what I was trying to say earlier too. That the historic we we came to the agreement about uh, nine years ago that we would do this alternating. Um, and, and occasionally there is a, when there's a, um, you know, a collision on the, on the calendar, then we would go to Stryker if we, 
vice versa when that occurred. But last year was an unusual year because there was no striker, and part of the year before, I guess. I think it's nice for citizens to have the same location that they can come to. Any other discussion on the location of the of moving all the buildings, all the meetings to the boardroom in Building F for 2016? It's been moved and second to modify the motion for uh, relocation to have all of the board meetings at Building F. Does everybody know what we're voting on? Ms. Serza? Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. Uh, so now we have a motion on the table for approval of the calendar. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion on the calendar for 2016? Ms. Sirs has been moved and seconded for approval of the calendar as amended this evening. Can you take the vote, please? Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. 5.04, appointment of school board member to serve as trustee on New Horizons board. Can I have it? My recommendation is for Mrs. Julie Hummel to serve as a trustee on the New Horizons board. Can I have a motion, please? My motion that we lay it on the table until um, the official date of Mr. Fuentes' resignation. Is there a second? Half failing to get a second, the motion dies. Is there a motion to uh, approve Mrs. Hummel as the trustee on the New Horizons board? Chair, I, I move appointment of Ms. Julie Hummel as um, school board member to serve as trustee on the New, board, New Horizons board. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? It's been moved and second to appoint Mrs. Julie Hummel as trust as to serve as the Williamsburg James City County trustee on the New Horizons board. Ms. Her Ms. Serza? Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Epstein? Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. 5.05, appointment of school board member to serve on WHRO board. Can I have a motion to approve Ms. Dr. Jim Beers to serve as the Williamsburg James City County School Board member to, on the WHRO board? Mr. Chair, I'd like to move that Dr. James Beers will serve uh, uh, representing this board on the um, WHRO board. Is there a second? Second. Ms. Hummel, uh, any discussion? been moved and seconded for for appointment of Dr. James Beers to serve on the WHRO board for W. James City County. Ms. Serza? Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Appointment of school board members to committees. Uh, can I get a motion for approval of my recommendation for <coughs> Julie Hummel to serve as the 21st Century and Career Ready Advisory Committee, for Dr. Jim Beers to serve as a Special Education Advisory Committee, for Ms. Holly Taylor and Ms. Sandy Young to serve as in the Student Advisory Committee, and for Ms. Kira Cook and Sandy Young to serve on the Policy Committee. Can I get a motion for all that? Yeah, motion. So moved. Is yes, that what so you're saying, moved. Dr. Beers? <laughs> Is there a second? Ms. Cook seconds. Any discussion? So can we go over it again? Yes, sir. For 21st Century and Career Ready Advisory Committee, Ms. Julie Hummel. Special Education Advisory Committee, Dr. Jim Beers. Student Advisory Committee, Ms. Holly Taylor and Ms. Sandy Young. And the Policy Committee, Ms. Kira Cook and Ms. Sandy Young. No further discussion. Uh, Ms. Sirs has been moved and, moved and seconded to accept my recommendations for the committee appointments. Can you take the vote, please? Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. 
Dr. Beers? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. Uh, 6.01, Announcement Superintendent's Report. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. <coughs> Congratulations to all the board members on their various appointments, and Happy New Year to everybody. Toronto Middle School physical education teacher Ronald Trainum was recently named Middle School Physical Education Teacher of the Year by the Virginia Association for Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance. We will invite Mr. Trainum to a future meeting for board recognition. Norwich Elementary Kindergarten through second grade students recently participated in the International Hour of Code. The Hour of Code is a one-hour introduction to computer science designed to demystify code and show that anybody can learn the basics. Students at Norwich completed puzzles and mazes using computer program logic, and students also learned to pair program, which means working with a partner to write code. In December, Lois Hornsby German students completed in, uh, sorry, competed in an international online vocabulary competition sponsored by thisislanguage.com. Much like a spelling bee, students had to know German words and be able to spell them correctly under pressure, competing online against students from England and the US. They were matched against competitors from 107 US schools and 105 in the UK. At the end of the 54-hour competition, Hornsby's German students earned first place amongst all schools competing in German. Two Hornsby Middle School students also placed in the top 10 individually. Sonia Wu, eighth grade, fifth place overall, and Varnum Bayless, seventh grade, ninth place overall. So a hearty congratulations to Hornsby and Sonia and Varnum. Mr. Chair, those are all of my announcements for this evening. Thank you, Dr. Constantino. Um, a couple of things I have before I go to the podium down there. Um, the PTA Reflections Award Ceremony is tomorrow night at Lois Hornsby, um, where the uh, students from various arts uh, get awarded for their, uh, our, not participation, but for their, for the uh, <coughs> excellence. Thank you, Mrs. Cook. Um, in the in various art forms, I, I look forward to attending that tomorrow night. And, uh, since it's the second day of the new year and the second day the students are all in school, I hope they come back rejuvenated and ready for uh, the new year and the end of the end of the semester. So with that, I'm going to go down there. So Mr. Uh, Fuentes has recently announced his uh, intention to retire from the position is the Powhatan seat. Um, he asked me to keep this as low key as possible, so I'm gonna try. So uh, Joe has served on the Williamsburg James City County School Board since 2006. Joe and I actually have uh, much in common, including uh, both of us are licensed professional engineers, and uh, we basically work essentially in the same place. So um, Joe is a veteran of the US Air Force, and I thank you for your service to our country. Um, he has served on the school board on the New Horizons Board, the 21st Century and Crew Ready Advisory Committee. I think it was known by another name at that point, but um, he served there. Um, Joe has been active with both the NSBA and VSBA and been recognized for his participation in those training sessions. <laughs> uh, I thank Joe for his service to WJCC, and I wish Joe and your wife, Lisa, well in the future, and all my best. Thank you, Mr. Fuentes. Uh, that brings us to 7.01 citizens comments. Dr. Beers. It is at this point in our meeting where citizens are invited to address the board. Those citizens desiring to speak have submitted speaker cards to the clerk prior to the start of tonight's meeting. These speakers are asked to come to the podium when their names are called, state their names for the record, and direct their comments to the chair of the board. It is, the board's, it is the board's interest and desire that all comments are heard and respected. Hence, the citizens are asked to not engage in applauding, verbal outbursts, or any other type of demonstrations during the presentations. 
Personal matters are not considered in public meetings. Therefore, the board requests that all speakers refrain from making references to specific individuals in any form or fashion. Though the board does not respond to your comments, your comments are heard and are appreciated. Each speaker is allocated three minutes to make their presentation, and the board asks that you respect this time limitation. Also, please be reminded that no time may be yielded to another speaker. Your acceptance and adherence to these guidelines will be greatly appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My directions are concluded. Thank you, Dr. Beers. Mrs. Cook? Dave Jarman. Keep it here. We don't. Good evening. My name is Dave Jarman. I live at 3646 South Square in the Berkeley District of James City County. I'd like to read into the public record a brief statement that I emailed to each of you last evening. I've entitled it an agenda for the school board for calendar year 2016. With five new members joining the school board this year, I felt it would be appropriate to talk a little about an agenda for the coming year. Educational professionals agree that the single most important factor in improving student performance is the hiring and retention of excellent teachers. Second is the determination of a learning environment that fits 21st century needs. Accordingly, this school board should consider setting three priorities in meeting these critical school issues. One, introducing a new approach to acquiring and retaining the best teachers available. I have prepared a modest proposal for reforming teacher compensation, which I will share with this board at a future time. Two, determining what a 21st century learning environment is, designing the curriculum to implement this environment, training teachers to operate there, and then designing facilities to house this capability. There are several potential initiatives which may be considered under this heading, revisiting block scheduling at the high school level, two, further study of Dr. Constantino's learning initiative at the middle school, including its implications for STEM Academy, expansion of vocational education, and opportunities for virtual learning encompassed in the virtual school system legislation currently before the state assembly. And three, identifying cost savings opportunities in non-academic areas jointly with funding partners in the county and the city, applying these savings to bringing costs in line with our competitors in the local area, and funding core initiatives relating to teacher compensation and program development. There are several opportunities under this heading as well. Restructuring health care benefits, introducing a preventative maintenance program for school facilities, which I spoke to at the last board meeting, and evaluating savings from the possible outsourcing of janitorial services and food services, among other services. The operative question is how the school board will organize itself to address these priorities. One idea may be to set up working groups at the board level to research and analyze these areas, then report back to the full board with proposed solutions. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. John. Ali Drake. Hi, good evening. Um, my name is Amelie Drake. I serve as your local president of your Williamsburg James City Education Association. Um, and I'm also proud to be a special education teacher here at DJ Montague. Um, it's my honor tonight as president to get to welcome the four of you to the board. Um, it's a great time of year to do this. January always is a fresh burst of energy at the schools. Everybody's excited to come back, snow or no snow, and um, get the year started with some new energy. So it's a great time to sort of have some new faces on the board and get a chance to work with you all for the first time. Uh, and Mr. Fuentes, I'm sorry to say that uh, it's been a surprise to say have to say goodbye to you tonight as well. So thank you for serving. We know and appreciate how much work that is. So. Thank you all, and I hope this is a great year. Thank you, Mrs. Drake. Miss Drake. It's future. <laughs> 8.01, VSBA Code of Conduct for school members. Um, each year, uh, VSBA uh, publishes this Code of Conduct. 
it has not, I don't think it's changed appreciably. Um, but uh, are there any questions from board members on the VSBA Code of Conduct? Uh, this is a discussion item that will be on as, on as an action item at our next meeting. Okay, uh, 8.02, and yes, sir. Are, we, uh, are you on the next one? Well, actually, well, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I guess we'll. I mean, I, I thought the two kind of went together, but I guess I thought the code of conduct was incorporated in. <coughs> I comment till, till you finish. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, Mr. Fuentes. 8.02 Annual Review of School Board Standard Operating Procedures. Mr. Fuentes? Um. <laughs> Normally, like every year, we've done. I mean, I know it's always come up in this meeting, but we really seem to be waiting for every year. And I was just offering that up for the new, for the new. Um, yeah, I mean, this is the time of year that we do did we do review our standard operating procedures. Um, uh, if you know, if there are. are issues, modifications that we want to make at this point, um, we can do so and or at least at least start getting thinking about those items prior to uh, our retreat. Whether we put this on our agenda for the, for the next one to vote on or not, um, I, th I think if there are proposed changes, what I would what I would recommend is if we get the proposed changes, we start putting that language, we discuss that at our next meeting and then vote on it at a future meeting. So we're not going to any any changes if if we have no changes we will we could potentially vote it on the next meeting but if we do have changes then um, it would just start the re modification review of that process are there any comments from board members on proposed changes for the SOP okay, does that include the Robert's rules of order uh, sure yep okay I want to propose that the board move from large group rule, uh, rules of order to small group rules of order and my reasoning is having observed um, the school board in action since June and prior to that, um, small group allows for a lot more discussion. I feel like for many of the issues that the board is facing and that the school division is facing, there needs to be a lot more discussion. Uh, it's less formal um, and um, motions um, are not limited to that. So I'm for proposing that we at least have our parliamentarian take a look at the advantages of each and present that to us at a future date. Dr. Beers, you're signed up. Yes, I understand <laughs> that question. I understand that. <laughs> I, 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 that would be a fine thing to consider, sure. So if you would take that action and get back to us at some point. I will do. Thank you, Dr. Beers. Thank you, Mrs. Young. Mr. Chair, I believe that would be a modification of page 17 of the SOP. Okay. What is your proposal? No, I was saying oh, that would that be a modification Mrs. of 17. Yeah, yeah Sorry. just directing you. To Sorry, I thought you had something but else I, that you wanted. Yes, I do. Mrs. Cook. Um, both page 3 and page 27 reference semi-annual board self-evaluation and I suggest uh, altering that language to annual because um, I think that's more reflective of practice. Anything else? Yes, on page 12, it speaks about the process for board members <clears throat> to express interest in serving in any leadership capacity or on a committee. And I think what's written on page 12 doesn't necessarily um, clearly articulate our practice, and I would like to modify that language uh, for proposal uh, to, for inclusion at the next, um, the next meeting. I think um, if you look at the third paragraph, the last statement, 
perhaps should be removed. Um, you want to uh, make those changes and, and bring that writing to us uh, at the next meeting? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and then on page 15, it references a release of the agenda on Friday, and our practice has become Thursday. Per Mr. Fuentes' uh, suggestion, I, I, I do have some other items that I'd like to discuss, but I think that they should wait until perhaps after or during a retreat. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Are, are we um, talking about various aspects of the SOP that we want the board to consider, or are we actually making comments on statements within the SOP now? I think we make comments and for the for consideration of the board. Oh, okay. So, because I, I have a number then. That, okay. Um, I, I, that's what I wasn't sure. If we're not. It's not a case of we're we're not going to have a discussion about them. It's just that these are things that these are things that like to board members have considered. So we're going so to bring those forward to the next meeting. These are the proposed changes. That's all. I and to, for a discussion, we won't be voting at the next meeting gotcha. on that. Um, do you have any anything that you'd like to? Yes, I do. Dr. Beard? On uh, page 31, um, I would like uh, to consider uh, numbers 8, 9, and 10. Um, and on page 32, the entire section there, employee request and or complaint to individual board member. That's page 32. 10. That's on page 31, the first one. Yeah, 8, 9, and 10. What what uh, what are you are you what are you looking to propose there? It's under uh, administration and personnel communication between right. the board and administration. Yeah, I just want them to. I I would like to reconsider those. Is there language that you're considering? I'm I'm more concerned about the uh, uh, the spirit and the uh, um, what the implications are for some of these. That's why I'm bringing them up. I'm not. Um, I wasn't prepared to talk about each one of these individually, but it's at some time uh, I would like board members to revisit those. And I've got some more as well. Okay. Got that, that entire paragraph on page 32. The employee all, request. All six, all six paragraphs, you mean? Uh, whatever it is. It's, <laughs> yeah, it's. Um, and uh, page, page 33, administration and personnel visits to schools. I'm, 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 uh, I'm sensing that some of these are, are, are kind of lockstep and, um, and um, um, I, 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 I want some further discussion about these. Okay. And not just me, but I want to know what other board members think about these. And since this is the first time I've had an opportunity to, uh, you know, at least identify some areas that I think um, um, that I'm concerned about that I would, I'd like to talk about at a, at a later date. Anything else we want that we want to look at on the SOP? That was that was the last. Okay. Other board members have any other comments on the SOP? Okay. We'll we'll, um, we'll have those. We'll have discussions about each of those going forward. Um, uh, we'll have to figure out how we how we have that discussion. Maybe we need to have a, a different a, a separate retreat and not put it on the agenda for the next meeting. But uh, have a, have a some time I, I where we was, can I was that. actually thinking that that a retreat would be a, a really appropriate place to uh, to talk about these. Okay, good. Thank you. So we will not put that on the on the agenda for the next meeting. Has the retreat been? No, it has not. We're, we're still we're still. I just wanted to <laughs> make sure it's not on the calendar yet. <laughs> we'll let you know when it's going to be on the calendar, and uh, come to you with some dates when once uh, Mrs. Cook and I come wrap our heads around that a little bit better. Uh, 
8.03 draft 2016-17 school year calendar. Dr. Constantino. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Each year in January, the administration brings forward calendar for the next school year and a draft calendar for the second year outside of that. So 16-17 and then a draft for 17-18. Ms. Overcamp-Smith is here this evening to take you through the process, the conclusions and recommendations of the school calendar for 2016-2017. Ms. Overcamp-Smith. Evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board, Dr. Constantino. Mr. Showa is handing out some hot off the presses documents. The PowerPoint that you have already in your hands is correct. There are additional documents at the end of what he just handed out that we will discuss in a minute. The 2016-17, yes. Will we follow this one? Either one is fine, Either. they're both the same. The 2016-17 school year calendar is reviewed for the first time during January for the school board and then is looked at again through um, the, the school division, staff, principals, and uh, the community. So this is your first opportunity to see what our draft is for the next school year. There are certain parameters that we have to follow. That wasn't that me. Wasn't me. <laughs> it's probably her. There are certain parameters that we have to follow, one of which is to start after Labor Day. That is in the Code of Virginia. Um, we unfortunately are one of a few school divisions that still start after Labor Day. Labor Day. Um, if you look at your screen, you'll see a map of Virginia that includes all of the schools, school divisions in blue that are able to start before Labor Day, and we are in the yellow. The state code is pretty clear. To get a waiver, you have to be closed eight days per year during five of the last 10 years, or you have to be surrounded by a school division that qualifies for a waiver. We do not meet either one of those requirements. We also are required by state code to include 180 instructional days. We in WJCC do not hold school on election day because many of our schools are used as polling places. We also align our calendar with the regional calendar, which includes Hampton, Newport News, Pocosin, York. Gloucester was also included in that, but they have a different calendar now. Um, we also require a four hour minimum on early release days. Calendar development process starts in October when we hold a community survey on our website. In November, the WJCC calendar committee and the regional calendar committee meet. In December, a draft is finalized, reviewed by the committee again, and then also provided to division leadership. In January, we have the school board presentation. And then we do allow significant time before, between that first presentation and the board's vote on the proposal. Our community survey, we had a 488 responses, 379 were parents, 90 were staff, and 19 identified as community. It is a survey primarily about the Thanksgiving and winter breaks, and there were two options that were most preferred. 46% preferred a two-day Thanksgiving break and a 10-day winter break, and 40% preferred a three-day Thanksgiving break and an eight-day winter break. Those percentages are much closer than typical, um, which is interesting this year, and I think it's all a result of the calendar and when those holidays fall on the calendar. That, the, was for, that, that survey's for 1617, or that was just in general? It's for the 1617 school year calendar, So yes. the 14% had no, no preference? No, there was a third option that was um, not preferred by our community. Okay, so these are closer than has been in the past? Yes. Typically, it is a runaway with a two-week vacation at winter break. Um, however, because a two-week vacation would require us to have the last school day as December 16th, I think a few more people understood that that was um, not necessarily the best option. Other comments included early release days and the burden that places on families, specifically for childcare. Um, we were asked by a number of people to attempt to align our calendar with local colleges, with Thomas Nelson Community College. 
that presents significant obstacles for us. Um, a number of our employees discussed reinstating the e-commute days and also the number of professional development days within our calendar. And far and away, the biggest comment was relating to the Labor Day start. As mentioned before, we try to align with the regional calendar. And as the map showed, Hampton, Newport News, Pocosin, and York all start the day after Labor Day. This year, we all regionally are proposing an eight-day winter break. And Newport News and Pocosin are proposing a three-day Thanksgiving break, which is in alignment with our calendar proposal. Specific information uh, about what is proposed. Open houses, obviously, before the school year starts with high school, middle school, and elementary. First day of school would be September 6th. Elementary back to school night, September 29th and secondary parent conferences in October the 18th and the 20th, middle school the 18th, October 20th for high school. Election day is a holiday. Thanksgiving break would be t the 23rd, 24th, and 25th of November. Winter break would be December 22nd through January 2nd with December 21st being an early release day. The Martin Luther King holiday is January 16th, President's Day, February 20th. Spring break, as has been our practice in recent years, would be the first full week in April. Memorial Day vacation is May 29th, with the last day of school being June 15th and graduation on June 17th. Early release days proposed in this calendar October 21st would be an elementary professional development day, and October 28th would be a middle and high school professional development days. Those were typically held together, but because of a number of logistical issues relating to not only the content of the professional development, but also the school days, uh, we have proposed splitting those. November 16th, 17th, and 18th are K through 5 early release days because of parent conferences. K through 12, as I mentioned before, December 21st would be an early release day before the winter break. January 25th and 26th of 2017 are early release days, grades 6 through 12 for exams. March 3rd is a professional development day. March 17th would be parent conferences for grades 6 through 12. April 20th is a parent conference for K-5, and that date has been added, re-added to the calendar at the request of the committee, relating specifically to being able to, able to meet with parents that second part of the year and having the time available to have those meetings. An additional committee request was June 9th to be an early release day for K through 5, and that is for, to provide teachers K through five with the opportunity to um, put together grade reports. June 12th and 13th are exam days for nine through 12. June 14th is an exam day for six through 12. And June 15th would be an early release day for K through 12, the last school day. It is important to note that adding those two early release days at the elementary level will reduce the bank time by 4.2 hours. And we'll talk a little bit more about bank time in a minute. So specific professional development and work days. Uh, new teachers will report August 22nd in this proposal. All teachers will report August 24th. And then you see listed there the before school professional development days and the before school work days. The days specifically noted high school, middle school, elementary school, those are all tied to the open houses. During the school year, there are three professional development early release days and then listed work days no school. Um, January 30th is a half day professional development and two dates have been designated e-commute days for teachers 
November 8, 2016, and March 31st, 2017. Those again have been added to the calendar at the request of the committee and because of input received through the survey. The marking periods in this calendar have been, um, we worked very hard to spread those out evenly and also to ensure that the interims were midpoint of each quarter. So those dates have changed a little bit from this year's calendar, but um, it was very important to the committee that those dates be aligned more closely if possible, and it was possible this year. And we have also proposed designated makeup days, November 23rd, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, February 20th, President's Day, and June 16th, which would be the Friday before graduation, the last weekday before summer break. Not the best instructional day, but it would help us meet the 180 day requirement by the state. Graduation is June 17th. June 17th, yes. With this calendar, we would bank time there would be 180 days, there would be no designated snow days or inclement weather days added into the calendar, but we do have banked time. We would have um, 5.9 day hours per day at the elementary school level and 3.8 hours every day for um, early release days. That gets us 49.2 hours or 8.9 days of banked time. Last school year, we were out eight days. We were out two early release days and uh, one two hour, two, uh, two two hour delays and one early release day. So you can see that that time is needed. At middle school, we would be banking 78 hours or 12.9 days. And at high school, 95.3 hours or 15.4 days. In your packet, you do have uh, a more specific calendar. You have a one sheet calendar that, that details all of the days. You also have a document that details the early release professional development days and work days. And then for planning, you have the 2017-18 calendar. Now the calendar that you have been provided tonight is for planning purposes only. It is aligned with the current proposal. It obviously can be changed significantly or not at all based on conversations for the following school year, the 2017-18 school year. Are there any questions from board members on the uh, proposed 16-17 calendar? I have a couple questions. Or Go ahead, Ms. Helmer. Okay. Um, with regard to the community survey and 46% preferring the two-day Thanksgiving break with a 10-day winter break, um, what could you tell me the uh, rationale again for not providing that option? For the two-week? For the 10 days? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, first of all, if you look at the calendar, page seven in your, your packet that was just handed out to you. The last day in school of school in December would be December 16th. That's very early in, in the month. Additionally, adding those days would require us to either add, a to add time at the end of the school year or definitely take away the third day for Thanksgiving. A number of families were um, commented about the fact that this year Thanksgiving was not the full three days as it has traditionally been in WJCC. That change was made to provide a two week winter break this school year. And then of the 488 responses when you have 379 of them from the parents, do you know what that percentage was of the parents of how many preferred the two day Thanksgiving break to the 10 day? like what the breakdown was? I do not. Um, however, I think we might be able to break it down that way. I just mm -hmm. trying to get a sense of the 
the parents that are planning things with their families. Additionally, the eight days does align with the regional calendar. All other school divisions in the region are planning an eight day winter break. And then one more question about the e-commute. Could you tell me more about that? I can. Um, when I arrived in 2011, uh, there was a program in place uh, to allow teachers the flexibility on certain days of the year to do a vast amount of work that they would do um, to prepare for the end of the grading period at home as opposed to traveling into school. So um, we, we have batted that idea around. Um, we've had e-commute days. We've not had e-commute days. As I travel through the schools and talk with teachers, I had a, a significant amount of feedback uh, that would suggest that the teachers appreciated um, that professional approach to that day. And I also learned, again, talking with staff and, and listening to concerns of teachers, that even though we designate those e-commute days, there's still a significant number of teachers who come in and, and do work. So I think that um, my thinking on that issue has changed over time. I think that we certainly have the ability to treat our teachers as professionals and understand that they are able to make good decisions on those days. And so um, I, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't opposed to reinstating them. We had, we had them, we didn't have them. There was some confusion about whether we did or didn't have them. And I decided that we should just make it clear and move on. Ms. Cook? Um, I'd like to follow up on the e-commute question. Does it have any impact on professional development? No, ma'am. We've uh, we've scheduled the professional development around those days. So that's those are, these are these are work days. These are des days designed to give to teachers. We're just giving them the flexi flexibility to use those days as they wish. And um, and this isn't a question about the content of professional development, but rather the, ca the, the calendar function. How's that working? I know you guys spent a lot of time a few years ago thinking about that. Can you just give me a sense of how that's playing out? Um, there are ongoing conversations about the loading of professional development at the beginning of the school year and trying to even that out. And Dr. Uh, Ms. Paula could answer specific questions about that. <laughs> Good evening. Because of the nature of our professional development and the fact that it involves the content coordinators and teachers, it's become um, very difficult from a scheduling standpoint to have all of our PD on one or two or three days. So we're trying to bring it so that it's more spread out so that we can provide quality professional development. Teachers aren't running from building to building and we don't have the parking issues, the space issues. Um, so we're, we're looking to provide a better experience that, um, that provides the professional development but also doesn't provide pressure on the people that are actually giving the professional development, if that makes any sense. Um, you know, we have the, the long-range plan, and as that evolves, it's going to involve more of our teacher leaders. And so in order for them to participate, we need to space out some of our PD. Um, one more question about conferences. So, the because that the conferences at the upper grades that's a relatively new addition as well. It is. So, and how's that working out uh, in terms of the calendar? And uh, there have been questions from parents about the limited number of spots available for those parent conferences. However, we have received significant positive feedback from teachers as well as from administrators about the value of those parent conferences, those one-on-one -on -one parent conferences versus the traditional back-to-school night. We are continuing to look at ways that we can tweak those nights to perhaps involve more parents as needed, um, but it, overwhelmingly at the school level, the feedback has been positive. We have received some feedback from parents that they really want us to go back to back to school night at middle and high school. Can I ask a question? Um, on the sheet that you gave us about the community survey, it said that 46% preferred two-day Thanksgiving break and 10-day winter break. What was the staff feeling on that? Do you have a breakdown? I don't have staff? a breakdown, but I do believe that we'll be able to provide you that information. 
that will be able to break it down for you. As a retired teacher, I know how excruciating it is to only get a week off. You need that time. Yes, absolutely. I appreciate more information. Any other board questions about the calendar? Um, in, in, re in looking at the survey, we had 379 parents and 90 staff, and we have 11,000 students and 1,100 teachers. Yep. So the, the uh, statistical relevance of the, when, when you come down to six percentage points, could be kind of questioned about that on where that goes. So uh, we have to be careful how much, how much uh, creed we put in the survey. Um, the e-commute days all occur at the end of marking periods. So teachers, teachers uh, can traditionally use that time to input their grades. They can log on remotely, and so they don't have to come into the school to get that, uh, get that accomplished. And so I know a lot of teachers uh, appreciate that time to, to work in their PJs, if you will, so they can do that from the house. So, um, so are we voting? To approve that at the next this at the next board meeting it is not currently on your calendar for January we wanted to provide significant time for our community to provide us input it is obviously up to the board to determine when they'd like to vote on the final calendar and have we traditionally voted on the final, final last calendar. year it was delayed until the end of February because of questions about winter break usually February one of the meetings February. Is usually on the February calendar okay but this this we're gonna give a month for public comment on the calendar. Is there any way that, that we can open up uh, the survey and hope to get a better uh, percentage? Is that possible to just have a quick, you know, survey on the main page of the website that says the board of the Williamsburg School Board is interested in your your opinion just to get a gauge of the community? We can. We can open up another survey. Um, we could tie it to this proposal because it's more specific information for our community to look at um, and provide us their feedback on the actual proposal. Yes, we can do that. Is there any way to provide a survey to, to the staff and faculty? Certainly. Specifically, so that we would get more feedback from them. We do work very closely with the association. We have a member on our committee who communicates directly to teachers and members of the association. But yes, we can, we can make sure that our teachers and other staff are very aware of the survey. Mr. Fuentes? Um, I think you pointed it out, but I just want to make sure. Uh, right now, the one that's being proposed aligns very closely with the regional calendar? It aligns, yes. Almost. A couple of differences. We have election day off here. Um, three of the school divisions are proposing the three-day Thanksgiving break, but all of the school divisions are proposing the eight-day with the early release and the, uh, the winter break ending on um, January 3rd. That, part of that's important to me because I know, you know, uh, um, the work we do with the governor's school and the uh, and the uh, uh, Career and Technical Center uh, with the other divisions, but anyway, thank you. Mr. Beers? Dr. Beers. Yeah, I, I, I guess I, I am um, not so much puzzled by the numbers, um, the fact that they're, they are quite low, quite small, and, and one way of interpreting these numbers is to say, well, the overwhelming majority of parents and staff really don't care one way or the other. Because these are really small numbers. They when, are you, when, you're, when you're talking about 11,000 students um, um, who, you know, I'm assuming their parents are speaking for them, but uh, um, I guess my thinking is um, I, I really support the calendar that's going to be reflective of our, of the, you know, our neighboring school districts. The survey numbers are in line with previous years. Um, however, it is a it is a low number. Because even if you bring, and we, you know, you, they haven't been disaggregated, so we don't know how many parents opted for this or opted for the other one, and uh, and, and 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 staff. But uh, it's more a comment than anything else, I think. Yes. 
So we will we will defer this from next next our next meeting's calendar, and we'll put that on. We'll have keep it up in another month for to receive comment from community and the students and parents and staff, and uh, hopefully get a better read from the community as far as what they're what they're looking for. We will look at the duration of the second survey. I don't believe that we want to keep it open for a full month. Right, um, right, right, right. However. A typical survey is up for 10 days, so we'll look at that. I, I, I align with Dr. Beers as far as main, main around, around the regional calendar and uh, keeping that. Any other comments on the calendar? Can, can I, just one other quick. Yes, sir. Just one quick question. Um, the, and I, I'm, I probably know the answer, but I'm going to ask anyway because I think people ought to know that. That, that you do, the, the creation of a calendar takes an incredible amount of time. And, and you have to deal with a variety of constituents over over an extended period of time. So, I think the other thing to realize there's been a there's been I'm assuming a lot of input from a lot of those uh, those sources that may not show up in the survey. That that absolutely yeah. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Overkamp Smith. Appreciate it. That brings us to our action items 9.01. Can I get a motion for approval of the personnel agenda as presented this evening? Mr. Chair, I move um, approval of um, action item 9.01, personnel actions. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? It's been moved and seconded for per approval of the personnel agenda as presented tonight. Ms. Serza? Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. 9.02, approval of minutes from the 12-15-15 meeting. Can I get a motion for approval of the minutes from the 12-15-15 meeting from someone who was here? Mr. Chair, I move approval of action item 9.02, approval of the minutes from the 12-15-15 meeting. Can I get a second from the other person who was here? Second. <laughs> if uh, I would just recommend if you weren't here that you might want to consider abstaining from this motion. It's been moved and seconded for approval of the minutes from the... 12, 15, 15 meeting, Ms. Sir? Ms. Hummel? So the correct parliamentary procedure is for me to abstain. No, no, I'm saying as a, an order, that is not a requirement. It's not required that you abstain. Not required for well, I'm just going to go ahead and approve it because I was sitting in the audience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Mr. Fuentes. Aye. Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook. Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye. 9.03, Resolution R116, National Mentoring Month. Can I have a motion for approval of the resolution for National Mentoring Month? Chair, I move approval of item 9.03, res resolution R-1-16, National Mentor Mentoring Month. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded for approval of our resolution R-1-16, National was. Mentoring Month. Is there any discussion? It's been moved and seconded for approval of R-1-16, National Mentoring Month. Ms. Serza? Mrs. Taylor. Aye. Mrs. Young. Aye. Dr. Beers. Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. 9.04, Resolution R216, Career and Technical Education Month. Can I have a motion for approval of R216, Career and Technical Education Month? Mr. Chair, I move <laughs> approval of item 9.04, Resolution R-2-16, Career and Technical Education Month. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? It's been moved and seconded for approval of Resolution R-2-16, Career and Technical Education Month. Ms. Serza? Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. 9.04, Resolution R-3-16, National School Counseling Week. Can I get a a motion to approve Resolution R-316, National School Counseling Week. 
I move that we approve resolution R316 National School Counseling Week. There a second. 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 <laughs> it's been moved and seconded for approval of res is there any discussion on the resolution for National School Counseling Week? It's been moved and seconded for approval of resolution R-3-16 National School Counseling Week. Ms. Serza? Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Mr. Kelly? Aye. Thank you. 9.06, resolution R-4-16, African American History Month. Can I have a motion for approval of resolution R-4-16, African American History Month? Is resolution R, that we approve R-4-16, African American History Month. Is there a second? Second. It's been moved and seconded for approval of resolution R-4-16, African American History Month. Is there any discussion? Mr. Chair, for all these resolutions, They'll be posted on the website. Is yes, sir. That it's our standard protocol. Yeah. Right. I just wanted to. Yep. No further discussion. It's been moved and seconded for approval of resolution R416, African American History Month. Ms. Serza? Mr. Fuentes? Aye. Ms. Hummel? Aye. Mrs. Taylor? Aye. Mrs. Young? Aye. Dr. Beers? Aye. Ms. Cook? Aye. Mr. Kelly. Aye, thank you. 10.01, board member comments. Do any board members have any comments this <coughs> evening? I'll get to you. Um, I would like to just uh, thank the city planning, Williamsburg City Planning Commission, um, because they approved the middle school special use permit last month at some point. It's been a blur since, but that was um, a good meeting, and I appreciate their support of our efforts to build the fourth middle school. I'd like to welcome Jim and Julie and Holly and Sandy. Welcome aboard. I'm really excited to be up here with you. Uh, and thank you, Joe, for your service. I miss you. And um, also thanks to all of you for your confidence in me. I hope to earn it. Thank you. Any other board members with comments tonight? I, yeah, I, I, first of all, I'd like to wish everybody a healthy, healthy, happy, and safe New Year's coming up. Um, and I very much look forward, as a new member on the board, working with the other members of my board, of the board up here, um, the superintendent, his staff, parents, teachers, um, and students as well, to uh, continue to help this school district uh, go forward. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fuentes? Yeah, uh, just some very brief comments. Um, since my announcement, um, I wish to thank uh, all the individuals that have contacted me. I've, I've been overwhelmed. Um, I had no idea, seriously. Um, it was truly humbling to get those comments, and I've actually um, made some new friends that I didn't even know watched uh, the school board uh, meetings. Uh, there are two people, those two previous school board members that I uh, wish to thank that I have um, when I started attending the meetings back in uh, 96 um, I started because of a, uh, an issue and then just started uh, attending um, and that was uh, Mr. Keener and Dr. Robert Welsh um, I appreciate um, the advice they've given me over the years I, I, um, I've tried to emulate some of their um, approach over the years and I appreciate their friendship and advice over the years. Um, and they played a, a big part in my involvement on this board. So, um, and I'd like to thank everyone else also, but those two individuals um, uh, have meant a lot to me over the past year. So, thank you. That's it. Thank you. Um, I'd like to welcome uh, my, my new colleagues here on the board. I hope the first meeting hasn't been too painful. Uh, appreciate all of the input and discussion. I uh, appreciate your confidence in me for uh, to continue on as chair. Um, we have a, a lot of work to do. I'd like to thank Joe for your service on the board and for uh, all of your good work these these many years and uh, the discussions that we've had and uh, what I've taken from you and and uh, I appreciate all of that. Um, uh, 
just as an announcement uh, going forward, um, since Mr. Fuentes' seat will become vacant on January 15th, uh, we will begin taking, actually we are already taking letters of interest from uh, those Powhatan District residents who wish to fill that seat. Uh, we will have, uh, we will advertise uh, for that for those applicants in position in an upcoming issue of the media. Uh, we're looking to receive letters and resumes and um, reference letters by January 27th on Wednesday, close of business. Uh, and we're looking to have a, a public hearing, special public hearing uh, to provide an opportunity for citizens and, citizens and candidates to address the board on February 2nd, um, which is why we're moving that meeting back here to the, <coughs> moving all of them to the county, it's the county now. Um, and then at some point after that, depending upon how many applicants we get, uh, we, will, we will meet for interviews of those candidates and for a vote, uh, just as a point of reference, that is, that is a county process. The county representatives of the school board vote on that. The city representatives will be invited to attend the public hearing and will be invited to attend the interviews um, and express, express their opinion. But after that, the, it'll be a, a county, the county reps will have discussion and vote. So, um, so anyway, the important dates there are January 27th for submittal of letters of interest, resumes, and uh, references, and then February 2nd for a public hearing. So uh, we'll go there. Uh, upcoming meetings, we will have um, a budget retreat uh, January 16th in room 400 at the school board central office. On January 19th, actually that'll be at 8.30 in the morning on Saturday morning, January 16th. <laughs> On January 19th, we'll have a closed session here at 6 o'clock in Building F. On January 19th at 6.30, we will also have a public hearing on the 2016-2017 budget, also here in Building F, uh, with a regular meeting of the school board to follow that here at Building F. Uh, National School Board Advocacy in Institute in D.C. is January 24th through 26th. We'll have a closed session on February 2nd here in uh, County F at 6.30. Um, actually, I think that's closed session will be at 6 o'clock, Ms. Serza. At uh, 6.30, we will have a public hearing on the Powhatan District seat um, and the work session immediately following that here in County F. So I think that is enough for our agenda for our upcoming meetings. So for that, set our agenda for the next for the next meeting um, without objection we're adjourned thank you all